What's going on everyone? As you can see, I'm running out of room in my room. I don't have a very big room, but we got a lot of stuff to go over. And I think that this is gonna be one of my cooler video series. Well, actually my first video series, which is pretty cool. But anyway, let's get to the point. I got a few things here and they're all from Walmart, okay? So of course we already did an amp dyno on this Pioneer, which I got right here. And this thing is a powerhouse for the budget. Uh, usually 120 bucks i got it for 90 dollars on sale in the clearance section i had to pick it up but you guys already know about that this stuff right here is what i think is perfect for a beginner bass head and audio enthusiast so let's go over just a few things that i picked up i know you probably already saw them in the thumbnail but let's just go over them i got the dual right here it's got four speakers four six and a halves i did a review uh, about last year they up the ante. Uh, it used to come with two speakers. Now it comes with four. And for 30 bucks, you can't beat that. You can't. It comes with a head unit and four speakers. So if you're trying to upgrade your, you know, your stock radio or your radio is just kapooey and your speakers are falling apart, this is the cheapest option out there. There is nothing that can beat it. With those two out of the way, I mean, you kind of already knew that. If you follow me on TikTok or Facebook or anything else, you guys know about that kind of stuff there. And if you watch my Amp Dyno videos, you've probably already seen the Pioneer. But these... These guys right here, <laughs> this is what's pretty cool. Um, for $80 roughly, because the speaker, the Jensen 1200 watt, 12 uh, inch sub was $35. It used to be 29, I swear it was 29. And below it here, we have the Skosh. This has been around since I started car audio. I bought the 10 inch version when they had the different ones, the 10 and the 12. This is the 12 you put together prefab. I mean, <laughs> it's, you know, you got to put it together and there's some simple instructions um, in the next videos. I'll definitely go over how to put that together and stuff like that. Nothing too crazy. I know you guys know how to put screws in boxes and follow directions. I'm not saying anything like that, but still we'll cover that. Um, but I wanted to get that because if you're going to Walmart to buy a system, what are you going to do? Are you going to go out and buy a prefab on eBay or are you going to buy the whole system at eBay? I think you're just going to buy the whole system at eBay if you're going to, you know, buy a prefab from there. Or you're going to go to the stereo shop and get a box and a sub and all this stuff. This is literally all Walmart gear. And yes, I know there's the kicker and there's the power acoustic and sometimes the dual. I haven't seen the dual in stock for a long time, but I wanted to get the Jensen because it's something that I've never personally ran. I've ran duals and uh, other stuff. And you see my uh, other video that I did a few weeks or months ago uh, at the point of this filming. And that was pretty cool. I love those dual subs. And this is pretty close to the specs of that. Um, so here, let me get the stuff out of the way and let's just go over this Jensen 12. All right, as you can see on the box, it says big old print 1200 watts peak, five and three quarter inch mounting depth, a two inch vented, aluminum voice coil, a uh, 40 ounce magnet, 12 inch surround, and speaker, I guess, woofer cone, they call it. Uh, four ohm impedance, sealed or vented, works in sealed or vented enclosures. Good to know. And there's a few other things on this, but nothing crazy. It's got some little, little diagrams of, you know, how to wire it with different amplifiers and stuff like that. So what we're gonna be pretty much doing is wiring it to a four channel. So neither of these options, but in the same sense, we're going to be bridging it how it is on the two channel option. So that's why I really wanted to do this speaker in particular. Um, yes, you could run the power acoustic Razor 2500 on a power acoustic sub or the kicker and see some pretty decent results. I believe the power acoustic sub is a dual four so you can wire it down to two, you can get some more power out of that. They do have the dual uh, 1000 watt and 600 watt amplifiers, two and four channel. Um, and those are very good options too. And yes, you could have uh, bridged this Pioneer uh, at four ohms on two sets of channel twice um, and got a lot of power for your bass. But then you would really not have anything to power your mids and highs. Yes, you can use uh, your radio power, but I did that video on this dual head unit last year and the 
the power wasn't very clean. Uh, there was a lot of distortion turned up past, we'll say past 11, <laughs> but it just really wasn't what I was looking for. And yes, you could do that. It's easier. But we're trying to get the most out of what we got. And what we're going to have is literally those four speakers replacing your stock door speakers. Hopefully your car has all uh, 6.5s. Otherwise, you might need to switch some things around. This might not work for you. But regardless, you're going to have a head unit and you're going to have an amplifier to power your mids and highs. So the head unit it's only going to do is literally turn on and off, turn the volume up and down and send RCAs out through the back. So there are some complications with that being that this head unit only has one set of pre outs. Um, but I think for what we're trying to do and the results that we're going to get, I think it's well worth it um, for the limitations factor of that uh, scenario. But regardless, uh, the amplifier is going to be bridged, not even bridged, but your lefts are going to be bridged and your rights are going to be bridged. And literally, you're going to be wired at two ohms on each channel um, and you'll have your left and right. You won't have your fader front to back, but that's not a problem. Uh, we're not doing surround sounds here. And uh, so anyway, back to my point, I think it's going to be really cool to do this because you're going to get some really clean power going to your mids and highs. You're replacing your stock speaker, so you're going to have just better sound. Yes, I know they're not the best, but you're going to have better sound. I think the tweeters are a lot better in pretty much anything aftermarket compared to stock. Um, now, obviously, there are some really nice stock speakers out there, but we're, we're just talking the person that's going to be going to Walmart. And I feel like if you watch this video, you might want to do this, too. So I'm going to get more into how everything works. But maybe for the end of this video, I'm just going to open this up real fast and just check it out. Hear my thoughts about it. So without further ado, let's get to it. <laughs> it says right on the front. If it's too loud, you're too old. <laughs> I like it. Uh, manual says specifications, 89 dBs. Peak power, 1200 watts. FS is 30 hertz, nice. VAS 92, QMS 11, QES 0.59, QTS 0.56, and a 40 ounce magnet. Uh, maybe later I can do the math. I'll divide the QES by the FS to see if it is the estimated bandpass is better sealed or ported or both. I'm just going to say it's probably like a 0.45 or 0.5, you know, kind of both. Uh, say, remember to use three quarter inch MDF Baltic birch. Use screws every two to four inches. Wow. So this is literally showing you how to build the enclosure of this, which is pretty nice. Um, has a little diagram right here. I'll try to go over that of what it says. Um, Good base performance, a mini enclosure, which would be 0.75 cubes. And I think that's sealed. Yeah, sealed enclosures. Better performance, small enclosure. Uh, let's see, one cubic foot. Best base performance, 1.25 cubic feet. And that's all sealed. And then it says uh, vented, good base performance, mini, one cube, and then better is 1.25 and best is 1.5 so it seems like 1.25 sealed 1.5 ported is the best specs and honestly that's pretty much any 12 especially a 12 that's this type of uh, driver well it even shows band pass enclosures that's not bad you know they even show port uh, dimensions and everything for the uh, ported best base performance box it says a three inch port by 11.75 um I'm going to say that's probably tuned ooh, decently, really, for how small it is. No, it's probably a higher tune, probably like a 30, 36, 38, give or take. I'd have to do the math. But that's really cool that they have it in there. I'm surprised they actually have box building uh, pretty much cutouts. It literally has cutouts and everything, uh, well, just the outer dimensions. But still, um, I think that's really cool and gets you going, especially for being a Walmart sub. I don't buy too many Walmart subs, so I can't, I don't have a, you know, huge opinion on them. Like, oh, this one's the best one. Other than Kicker, come on, man. It's got to be the best Walmart sub. So, um, oh yeah, I might want to flip this. Give me a second. 
And we got the driver. Let's see. Looks like it's in there pretty good for shipping. I figured I'd go over the unboxing stuff later towards the end of the video. For the guys who just like my content and just like to see what's going on. Rather than, you know, do the boring unboxing part <laughs> in the beginning. Might as well talk about what we're doing. You know what I mean? Because this is going to be a pretty cool series and I'm going to break it up. You can tell I buy all my stuff used. I'm not good at opening up packages. And I'm really bad at this. <laughs> okay, so. Get that out of the way. This thing looks pretty, pretty nice. It's already, I already can tell it's pretty light. Kind of stuff that right in there in the basket full. Hmm, brand new rubber. Gotta love the smell. Wow, okay, so, I mean, it's not bad, it looks nice. I mean, it looks like your generic $30, $40 woofer. Not bad, I mean, it looks clean, it really does. And then we got the regular um, old style terminals for the uh, speaker and the leads, got jump leads, just going into the coil, no sewn in <laughs> leads here. But I mean, honestly, I, I don't mind speakers like this. I know my J, uh, JLW3s, same thing, they're version 2s, just like that. Um, that's cool, it says Octane beside Jensen, so they must have something to do with Jensen as well. Okay, right there. 300 RMS. 300 RMS. I mean, I wouldn't say that's a terrible rating, because it is a 2-inch coil. Looking at the motor and just how it's built and, and the weight of it, um, yeah, I would put 300 RMS on it, and then you're going to see half that. So, is it rated correctly? Probably. Uh, well, would it take 300 RMS for five minutes straight at 40 hertz? Probably not. It might get pretty hot and just go. Maybe we can do that since this is a Walmart sub, and you know Walmart's return policy. It is grade A. <laughs> see me walking in there with a blown sub hey i need to return it wait andy blew a sub what yeah it happens check out my youtube channel so anyway um yeah this thing's pretty cool um i don't know i just like new things you know me um can't wait to install this but what we're gonna do we're gonna install it into this enclosure which is 1.25 cubes which it says is perfect the best base performance for sealed box uh 1.25 cubic sealed now, knowing how this box is over here, um, I had this back in 2000 and I want to say six. And let's just say <laughs> I kept having to fix it. It would leak, it would fall apart. So my advice on this, I will do a little put together video on it and talk about it more in depth on the next video. So with everything else. Um, but the easiest way to help that not happen is what we're going to do is we're going to put it together. Um, probably not going to use the screws that come with it. Um, I feel like the screws that come with it are almost like drywall screws, not beefy enough. So what we'll do is we'll screw it together, but maybe we'll throw some wood glue in between the seams, put some wood glue in there and then screw it all down and then liquid nail it on every single corner. We're not looking for looks, we're just gonna gawk it up so that it does seal the box and help keep things together. That's my only thing on that, but I think this is pretty cool because at the end of the day, I spent under $250 on everything. Yes, the amp is 120, we'll say 120 MSRP. The radio was $29.99, so we're at 150, okay? And then this box was 45 and this speaker was 35. So that is what, $80, $80 plus 150, that's $230. And we'll say plus tax, we're probably over 250 or right around that. But I mean, you're getting a head unit, you're getting four speakers, four 6.5 inch coaxials. You're getting an amplifier to power your subwoofer and your speakers, which is almost next level stuff. It's not 
something that all beginners do. And if you're going to do it, that's the right way to do it. Um, and then we're going to have one side of the amplifier for the subwoofer. We're going to bridge it at four ohms on two channels. Um, and I think it did around 300 watts. I know it did way overrated. It said it was supposed to do 180 watts RMS um, bridged or 90 watts at four ohms on each channel. And I know um, past clipping, it did a lot more. I'd have to look back on the video exactly what it did, but I feel like that's the perfect amount of power to feed this woofer, to make everything sound clean, undistorted, and it's gonna be it's gonna be decently loud. You know what I mean? I'm not talking like 140s, but if we get a 130 out of this build, I would be I'd be happy. But even if it wasn't a 129, a 128, and everything sounds clean and punctual. You can't beat that for $250. Try doing that at your local stereo shop. Try going on Amazon. You're not going to beat it. I guarantee you. I want to just say thank you to my Patreon. I just want to thank everyone for supporting the channel, supporting me, and watching all the lives, and sometimes interacting with you guys on lives. That was pretty cool with Rob. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. The next one is going to be... Uh, probably the free air test and putting the enclosure together the right way and one step at a time we'll do it just like Team SP Loud. Thank you guys for watching. Stay living loud.